Some modern species of birds of prey found around the world today can get very large indeed, but when it comes to sheer size, the largest of them all is the Andean condor. This flying giant is the biggest of all modern birds of prey and is also the largest of all the New World vultures, being one of two species of condors found in the wild, the other being the much rarer Californian condor, which is also on average slightly smaller. The sheer body size of this immense bird truly is impressive to behold, as they can reach around 3 foot tall standing upright, the height of some small children, and they can weigh up to 14 or more kilograms. The immense wingspan of this enormous vulture, however, is its most impressive feature, and the largest individuals can have a wingspan of over 3.3 metres, making them one of the largest flying birds alive today in terms of wingspan and body weight. To see an Andean condor in the flesh and on the wing is truly amazing. Even compared to other larger raptors like the largest eagles, the condor's sheer wingspan size is truly something else. However, as truly immense and spectacular as the Andean condor is to see in the modern day, it truly blows the mind to imagine the size of some prehistoric raptors and birds of prey. Some of these prehistoric giants we have covered in previous videos on this channel, most notably the gigantic Haast's eagle from New Zealand that lived until around 500 years ago. Believed to be the largest eagle that has ever existed, this immense raptor was a very powerful predator, capable of taking down gigantic flightless birds known as moa over twice the size of the average man. It had a similar wingspan size to most modern Andean condors, but had an even more massive body and much more powerful build, with tiger-sized talons and feet so powerful and large they could wrap around a human head and possibly crush it. This huge apex predator of New Zealand is probably the best known of all the gigantic predatory birds of the past, along with the flightless terror birds, but there was another species of flying bird of prey, which was so enormous that even Haast's eagle couldn't hold a candle to its size. The size of this bird, in fact, was so immense, it didn't just completely outclass any modern flying birds in terms of wingspan and body weight, it rivaled that, in fact, of some small aircrafts. It belonged to a family of gigantic airborne scavengers, quite reminiscent of the modern condors and vultures of today, but with size on an even greater scale, only this particular species was the largest of the lot, over double the size of Haas seagull even. So today, we're going to be looking at one of the largest flying birds that has ever lived on the planet, the mighty Argentavis magnificens. Argentavis is part of an extinct family of birds known as Teratornids. Teratorn roughly translates to wander bird in Greek, and they were a family of flying and scavenging birds, very much like modern vultures, although often larger, with species having wingspans of over 3 to 4 metres being not unheard of. It is currently assumed that Teratorns plus Argentavis are part of the order Cathartiforms, which includes the New World vultures. Although they share the same name, there are actually two separate families of vultures in the world, the Old World and New World vultures. All modern New World vultures, as well as the Teratorns, are found in the Americas, whereas all other vulture species found in the rest of the world, Europe, Africa or Asia, are known as Old World vultures. Argentavis lived in South America during the late Miocene, and its name roughly translates to the giant magnificent bird of Argentina. Almost certainly the best known of these extinct teratornid birds, Argentavis is definitely a species that has become more well known and recognised in the public consciousness over the years, most likely due to its inclusion in the prehistoric themed game Ark even if the appearance of this creature deviates slightly from the real thing. Of course, the most notable part about Argentavis is its immense size. There has been somewhat debate over the true size of this bird's immense wingspan over the years, but one thing is for sure, it is enormous. 
Current estimates put this bird's immense wingspan at around 5 to 6 metres across from tip to tip, with truly gigantic individuals maybe having wings approaching nearly 7 metres across, in extreme cases. This is about double the size of the wingspans of some of the largest flying birds alive today, including the Andean condor as previously mentioned, and the wandering albatross. They are so immense in fact, they approach or even rival the wingspans of some of the smallest flying aircraft. However, these wings were not only very long, they were also very large and broad, which gave them a great deal of surface area on top of their length, which added to the size. After all, Argentavis was, like a vulture, mostly a scavenger, and would have likely soared over open plains in search of prey, and would have required wings of this shape to be able to soar well at all. However, despite this incredible feat, Argentavis does have, believe it or not, a challenger in this department in terms of wingspan size, a gigantic prehistoric seabird known as Pelagornis. This recently described seabird was like an albatross on steroids, with freaky looking teeth in its beak, with a wingspan comparable to or maybe even up to 20% longer from point to point than an Argentavis, although its wings were much narrower in appearance, designed for gliding rather than soaring, meaning that in terms of their surface area, they may not have been quite as impressive. To search for the largest wingspan in the entire animal kingdom, however, you'll have to go back even further, back to the Cretaceous period, a time when dinosaurs ruled the earth, and the largest flying creatures that ever lived were the gigantic Ashdarkids, giraffe-sized pterosaurs with wingspans of over 30 feet or more. The largest among this family of Ashdarkids, such as Quetzalcoatlus and Hatsigopteryx, were truly the largest flying animals we know of, and although pterosaurs like this are often referred to as dinosaurs or even birds, they are not. They are somewhat distantly related, however, as they are also part of the archosaur family tree, but they also have a variety of anatomical features that separate them from these other two groups. Back on the subject of Argentavis, it's not just the immense wingspan of Argentavis that makes it so enormous, but also its great height and body weight. Specimens could reach nearly 12 foot long in life from beak to tail, and from head to toe, the height of this bird could have ranged between 1.5 to 1.8 metres tall. The largest individuals could look a grown man in the eye while standing upright. The skull and beak of Argentavis was also impressive, over at least 30 to 40 centimetres long or more. Argentavis is considered to be the heaviest flying bird that we know of in history, and by a considerable margin. Adult specimens are estimated to have weighed around 70 to 72 kilograms in weight. In contrast, the previously mentioned Pelagornis weighed no more than 20 to 40 kilograms in weight. The heaviest flying birds alive today are the Cory and Great Bustard, which range about 18 to 20 kilos, so significantly lighter than the Argentavis. With such immense body size and tremendous weight behind it, how on earth did this gigantic bird ever take to the skies? Well, much like its modern relatives, the larger condors and vultures of today, Argentavis relied mostly on a soaring type of flight style to get around, with short periods of flapping flight in between, especially when taking off. Much like these modern soaring birds, skeletal anatomy indicates that it lacked the musculature required for beating its large wings repetitively over long periods, and so would have likely used elevated positions such as mountain slopes, combined with a strong headwind, to gain altitude initially. Furthermore, considering that Argentavis lived in a fairly open-spaced and warm habitat, it would have almost certainly used thermals as well, to gain altitude when soaring looking for food, just like its modern brethren. Virtually all modern species of large vultures and condors are scavengers by nature, and are an essential part of keeping the ecosystem healthy. Much like these birds, Argentavis would have almost certainly detected carrion by spotting it from a great distance with its incredibly sharp vision, using its immense wingspan to gain the maximum lift needed to cover immense distances at a great height, scanning the ground in the open plains of South America around 7 million years ago. 
And just like these modern vultures and condors, along with virtually all other birds of prey, Argentavis, along with its terror-torn brethren, had an exceptionally large and powerful hooked beak, which was quite capable of tearing through the toughest hide and extracting all kinds of tissue for consumption. However, while Argentavis and its kin are definitely thought of as scavengers, the idea of them being active hunters is not entirely out of the question either, and in fact, they may have been more able to do so than some modern vultures. For one thing, pterotorns are noted to have a proportionally larger, more eagle-like beak in relation to their skull size than modern Old World vultures, which suggests a slightly more refined and strengthened facial structure, which may be more suitable for dealing with tough, struggling prey. Argentavis also had long, strong legs and large, powerful feet, which it used for walking on the ground very effectively, although it has also been proposed by some that they may have been used also for catching small animals. Once again, their feet seem to have more in common with those of an old world vulture than a new world vulture, albeit nowhere near as large and powerful as the feet and talons of an eagle. Equipped with somewhat more predatory anatomical features compared to your typical scavenging vulture, combined with this bird's immense size, an Argentavis may have been a somewhat more fierce hunter than previously expected, capable of taking on small animals such as rodents, armadillos, and maybe even animals up to the size of smaller ground sloths, using its large size to pin them to the ground after swooping upon them, and maybe even swallowing some small prey items whole. The immense size and ferocity of an adult Argentavis may have also enabled it to dominate virtually all of the carnivores in its environment. Larger species of modern vultures and condors are known well to engage in quite aggressive confrontations over carcasses with other carnivorous animals, such as jackals and foxes, sometimes using their great size and aggression to dominate these other smaller carnivores. A variety of mammalian carnivores lived in South America at the time Argentavis was around, and one of the strangest was a bizarre marsupial predator known as Thylacus smilus, with long saber-tooth-like teeth. This bizarre creature would have been a fearsome adversary, but even this roughly leopard-sized carnivore may have given Argentavis a wide berth on a carcass. As well as dominating other smaller predators around a previously discovered carcass, Argentavis would have also likely used its immense size and wingspan to scare off other predators from their hard-earned meal, a behaviour known as kleptoparasitism. An adult Argentavis would have likely had very little to fear once it reached maturity, for its immense size and wingspan combined with its ability to fly immense distances would have enabled it to dominate most other smaller predators. However, there is one family of animals that lived alongside Argentavis that may have been too much even for it to handle, and they of course were the flightless terror birds. Scientifically referred to as Furus rackets, these giant carnivores were the dominant predators on the South American plains, and some species became truly huge, sometimes reaching over six foot tall or more, and weighing at least two to three times as much as Argentavis itself. These were aggressive predators with an attitude to match, and they dominated the Americas for over 60 million years. Some were exceptionally fast runners, with razor-sharp, almost velociraptor-like claws on their feet, and a huge hooked beak designed to deliver bludgeoning blows on prey, which included both large and small animals native to South America. These huge predators are quite well known, but somewhat underrated in terms of overall popularity. And there is a lengthy video previously made on this channel which discusses terror birds in greater detail should you wish to learn more about these amazing prehistoric beasts. So while the giant terror birds ruled over the lands of South America with an iron fist as the dominant predators, Argentavis was the undisputed ruler of its prehistoric skies. Overall, South America during the Miocene was a pretty strange and terrifying place ruled by the largest predatory birds the world has ever seen, alongside a host of other bizarre animals not found anywhere else on Earth. This great bird, however, despite its immense size, did eventually go extinct. As with so many of these prehistoric animals, 
Understanding the exact cause of this bird's extinction is very difficult to say for sure, although the best theory is linked to climate change. Towards the end of the Miocene, the South American climate became considerably cooler and drier, and these changes likely led to habitat loss, along with loss on various food sources, which would have ultimately been problematic for the giant pteratorn, as a bird this size required a lot of food to survive. These major factors, combined with a few other potential issues, such as a slow reproductive rate linked to the longevity of these birds, may have ultimately, over time, led to the gradual decline and eventual demise of the largest predatory bird that ever flew on Earth. However, in the place of Argentavis and other giant prehistoric pteratorns, smaller, more adaptable species like modern condors and vultures took their place as the new large soaring scavengers of today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting learning about this gigantic prehistoric species. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.